Hello, everybody. Um, it's Steve, Brother Steve here, and I am going to be reading something from the book called The Field. You get that, Morgan? The Field is a compilation of various works from the uh, great brother, Saint Ignatius Branchininov who had been a monk in um, Russia in the 1800s. And so I am going to be reading to you from a passage out of this. And this essay is called The Pharisee. And it's in a, in a bigger section um, called... The Sea of Life, Reflections on the Sea of Life, Part 2 of the Field. Anyway, I want to read this to my dear brother in Australia, who I told I would get this up. Sorry for it being delayed. Um, no real excuse, except I'm really busy. So, this is to you, or for you, brother. Um, I'm going to read these in short segments. And I'm going to try to get like a cohesive thought. It's a pretty large paragraph or uh, chapter with just so much in it. It's it's so convicting. And before I get started, I just want to say that I have suffered from this disease of Pharisaism for years now since I can remember since I was a boy, uh, the sin of judging, the sin of thinking that I'm right and that other people are wrong. So with that said, I will go ahead and begin to do this and I am going to have the camera just panning into the fire so you can simply hear me read and uh, just think about it and not me. So. Brothers, let us look into the way of life, the life of our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ. We will see that he was never offended by the sins of others, no matter how heavy those sins might have been. Also, there is not a single example in the gospel of the apostles being offended by the sins of others. However, the Pharisees were constantly tempted by the sins of others. They were offended even by the most perfect Lord, the incarnate God. They were offended so often that they even condemned him as a criminal and delivered him to be shamefully executed. They crucified the Savior on a cross between two thieves. It should be obvious from this that being offended at the sins of others is a serious spiritual disease. With discernment, one must carefully watch over one's heart and mortify any temptation in it to judge one's neighbor. Only the gospel teaches this. The gospel is a holy book. As the sun perfectly reflects in a perfect spring, in a pure spring, so the gospel reflects Christ. He who wishes to see Christ must cleanse his mind and heart through repentance. In the gospels, he will see Christ. In the Gospels, he will see Christ, the true God, the Savior of, our, of fallen mankind. He will learn from the Gospel, and he will learn from the Gospel 
the qualities of a disciple of Christ. Hold on. I am so sorry. Let me read this sentence again. He will learn from the gospel the qualities a disciple of Christ must acquire. He is called to learn meekness and humility from the Lord himself. In this virtuous emulation of God, he will find blessed peace for his soul. Segment 1.